Hey, welcome back, chess friends. So before I start the game today, I have some good news. You remember how I gave that Canadian guy that I played the benefit of the doubt? Yeah, so it wasn't exactly worth giving him the benefit of the doubt. I got the message from chess.com today that he was cheating. So you guys were right. <laughs> so the case is settled on that and we can finally move on. Case closed. Okay. Um, I'm playing a 573. This feels a little bit wrong, if I'm being completely honest. But uh, hey, uh, don't blame me. I'm just the player. Blame chess.com matchmaking. I normally like to get paired up with people that are either at my elo or just slightly above it. Um, I feel like that makes it kind of fair. So. <laughs> Maybe I could have gone for B4 there with the pin. Potentially. I'm feeling a bit better today. I think yesterday was my peak feel like crap. Symptoms are getting better today. I feel like I'm improving. Uh, I feel a lot more mentally aware today. So I'm happy about that. <clears throat> I need to be mindful of the fact that when he sacks this, this pawn is going to be undefended. I think I should have just attacked his knight with this bishop. This bishop's not really doing anything. Um, I'm just going to get the queen out and protect the pawn, honestly. If he doesn't take on c6 here, I'll just push up a6. We were playing I like Ike from the good old USA. Yeah, okay, so he took there. Uh, what's the move here? believe we want to let the light square bishop breathe, so we capture this way. Normally, I'm pro capturing towards the center, say with the b-pawn. But I don't believe that's the play this time. Um. Okay, yeah. There is also this attack as well. I need to get the knight out to f6 at some point so I can castle. Um, I'll just attack his knight and try to go for the stacked pawns. He'll probably develop to d2. Um, okay. That's fine. I mean, can't I just block with the knight here? I don't want to push f6. Let me think about this. I uh, probably don't need to think too hard about this. I could probably push e6 with the queen. That's probably viable. To still protect e5. Or I can block with the knight. I'm going to go block with the knight. Maybe taking the knight there was the play. I kind of blitzed that move out a little bit too fast. Okay, so he wasted a move there, essentially just moving that bishop back and forth. I will go ahead and stack his pawns. Yup. <clears throat> I could develop or I could get my pieces out. I 
I'm leaning towards getting my pieces out. I imagine he'll go h3 here, huh? If he goes h3, I'll just fall back h5. He might push g4. At that point, I'll just go back to g6. Um, so yeah, yesterday I was talking about some chess terminology, how I tended to call pieces hanging when they're not attacked. And then I was asking if there was a term that described the piece that was uh, sort of off on its own floating, but it wasn't attacked, but it wasn't defended by any of your own pieces as well. And someone pointed out that that's called a loose piece. So that's good to know. I don't want to sound like a doofus when I talk about these things. Um, I don't mind sounding like a doofus, but I also don't want to sound like a total doofus either. Let's see. I could probably push pretty far here, huh? b5 potentially could always just defend as well mm. kind of like b5 just to get the pawns out further up the board and yeah, it's protected by c6 so Need to be mindful of this diagonal. Yeah, so every once in a while, I'll watch the gameplay back that I record and post here. I don't do it very often, but I've been trying to do it more recently. And what I notice is that it's a lot easier to notice things when you're just watching the video back and looking at the board in hindsight. And I always wonder how I miss such obvious things in the middle of the game. <laughs> I don't know what that phenomenon is called, um, but it's just something I've noticed, which I uh, think is kind of interesting. Like I'll look at a position and I'll be like, wow, I had like a giant open diagonal with the queen or a giant open diagonal with the bishop. Why didn't I just take advantage of it? And um, I don't really have a good answer of uh, why that is. <laughs> What's the downside if I take this? I mean, he's got, what is that? Three pieces defending d4. I only have one attacking it. What is the real downside here? Um, yeah, sure, we'll trade, whatever. I need to castle here at some point too. Um, I would like to get this rook off onto d8. Eventually, x-ray the queen. Seems like a good idea. Uh, I'll be really surprised if he doesn't take with the pawn here. Hmm. Okay, kind of an interesting move. I was thinking he would take with the pawn so he could un- double his pawns, but hmm. let's see, I wonder if I can attack his queen. I do have this attack. Um, I can't attack with the rook because it hangs my a7 pawn. Hmm. There is this really nice move 
which would force his G file to open, which I do like. So I'm going to do that. I'll be shocked if he doesn't recapture. Um, this will set me up for some nice moves with the queen here. Yeah. Let's see. Could always attack his queen. It is a forcing move, but I'm kind of tempted to leave the uh, the rook on the h file and just not castle here. I think it's a bit riskier, but um, I'll just play it safe here. I need to keep in mind that my queen is loose. That doesn't sound right. My queen is loose. Someone should... Yeah, never mind. That might make for a good sticker or a shirt. <laughs> Merch shop coming soon. Just kidding. <laughs> Nobody likes a loose queen. <laughs> I'm going too far with this. <laughs> Let's get back into the game. So when he inevitably moves his queen, I'll probably be going for something like h5 with the knight and trying to figure out how I can get my queen on the g file. This might be one of those games where there just could be a early checkmate since this is wide out in the open. I see. That is a very interesting move. Indeed. Okay. How do we combat this? I kind of need to protect my queen here. I don't love this, obviously. G5, probably not the play. I think he found a really good move here. Could always protect e7 with a knight here. Uh, if he takes queen, sure, I'll just take back. Otherwise, I'm just eyeing his bishop. What's the downside to doing this? Could also just push a rook up, defend as well. I just don't want his pawn to end up on f6 because then I have to deal with the same problem with the open g file. So I think I'll just protect here. I kind of would like to defend the queen with something else besides the knight as well. Would probably be a good idea. Pretty even game so far. I'm trying to get into the habit of normalizing the opponent's pieces. Oh, you know what a really good move that I did have here? Let me finish my other thought. I'm trying to get into the habit of normalizing the opponent's pieces. Um, okay. That's interesting. Uh, normalizing the opponent's pieces when they're on my side of the board. So for example, like when one of his pieces is on these four uh, ranks, I'm trying to get better about just defending and neutralizing those pieces rather than going off on attacks on his side of the board. But what I'm realizing I, I did on this move here, knight to d5 was he had a hanging pawn 
Uh, so I could have just moved the queen here and then defended the knight that way. So a bit of a blunder on my part there. It was kind of a miss. I'm really tempted to just... Ooh, I have a sick fork here. C3. Oh, I believe I'll be winning a rook. No? No? Yeah, this wins a rook. I was really tempted to capture on e3 there. But this is a pretty sick tactic, so we kind of have to go for it. How does he defend this anyway? Well, I guess he doesn't have to defend it, huh? He already just has the rook defending it. I was hoping... Oh... What does that do? Um, what does that do? Is he just trying to attack it? Hmm. I do have a check here as well. The check is a really interesting idea, but still, his bishop's defending. Checks captures attacks, huh? Well, okay. Blitz that one out. <clears throat> That's totally fine. Maybe I'll just go defend. I need to keep in mind that C7 is attacked. I want to go take the pawn, but... He probably will go b5, seeing how he's been playing. Uh, no, actually, if he takes c7, that's just defended. I, I think he'll take the pawn on b5 here. He'll probably go for that. Interesting. Well, speaking of neutralizing threats, I suppose this has to be done, right? What was the idea behind that? I could either get the rook out of harm's way. I don't really... No, just kidding. I don't need to get the rook out of harm's way. <laughs> it's already protected. I do block my pawn if I go... Maybe I just go for the trade, huh? Maybe I have enough of an advantage here to just offer the trade. Maybe I don't care about winning more material since I'm already up three. That's probably enough to secure a win. I'll just do that. That, that seems like a fair idea. No reason to complicate it. I have a b8, b6 idea. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it just doesn't seem worth it. This game is probably winnable just with the two rooks. Two rooks and an extra pawn. <laughs> well, I guess I understand why he hasn't taken the b-pawn, because it opens it up for check on his back rank. So now I understand why he hasn't done that. Oh, also... Oh, yeah, so now I have a... Um... Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind.
I don't really have check because then his queen recaptures. Just kidding. Okay. So he has taken the pawn. So he probably wants to take this pawn next. Interesting. Any reason why I don't just attack his queen on c8 here? Hmm. I do have this check. Uh, it's a bit forcing. I like c8 better, but also the check is fun. It just wins a uh, hanging pawn. Yeah, let's just do that. I believe I can just launch my rook out at him. Mm -hmm. Mm. I kind of just want to move the queen back and protect this rook again. There's no more checks here. He's defending everything with his bishop. He has a free pawn here. I'll just go back and protect the rook. Protect the rook, protect the pawn. D8, B5. Seems fair. Probably C8 will be my next move. Um, No, I take that back. I think D6 will be my next move. Ah. Okay, so... Interesting. I have another free pawn as well. Attack his uh, to to tax his rook as well. He'll probably have to fall back to one of these squares. Okay, so he's looking for a sneaky checkmate which I can't let him have. Just have to push the pawn up there. He'll most likely move his uh, rook. They'll probably have to go, what, e1, f1, g1, h1, right? Maybe c1. Maybe something like b4, too. That's fair too. Well, I guess we'll just keep trading pieces off. I <laughs> uh, could possibly try pushing a pawn as well. Okay, so he's going to try to push this pawn. I need to be careful of that. I'm kind of feeling d2 if he pushes. I have check, and then his queen will probably be forced to move. I 
Then again, I am defending g6 with the queen already. So. <laughs> I'm try to play a little bit more aggressively here. Mm, I have the material advantage, so it probably doesn't make sense to play too passively here. I just realized that the bishop is attacking that square. <laughs> so that's a really bad move. <laughs> Looks like we'll even out the game if he notices that. <laughs> I'm just hoping he doesn't notice it. That was obviously a blunder. Okay. So that is a check that I will defend really easily. Okay. I'm in check, so he'll probably go for... Hmm. No, I just have to go here. I'll be shocked if he doesn't take the rook still. Okay, so I believe I'm just going to come out ahead. I know he's one away from mate, but I'm pretty sure that I can just get out of this with my queen rook duo here. See, do I go g2 or f5? I'm thinking f5. Oh, but no, but that's not a check, so. Let's just play some forcing moves. He is in a very good position, I will admit. <laughs> I think that was really good for me. Mm, I also do have this nice check here. I do like this check. Protected by the pawn. Yeah, I like this move here. Boy, oh boy, I really don't want to lose this game, huh? <laughs> I believe I can kind of just ladder him over to the side of the board at this point. <laughs> Only downside is my rook may en end up on d2. But... Let's think about this one. No, I don't want to block the rook from moving this way. Also don't want him to go back either. Mm. Yeah, maybe g3. G3 seems like an idea. I want to just keep forcing his king into this corner here so I can ladder him eventually. I just really need to be mindful of this diagonal here. That's probably the one thing that's really going to get me. Yep, so continuing to force him to the right side of the board. But 
believe he's just forced to see. Yep. Need to be mindful of the queen diagonal here. Uh, let's see another forcing move here. So far, so good. Another forcing move. B3. Just trying to avoid these diagonals. Would be pretty funny to win with um, a pawn check. <laughs> Is this just GG? Yeah, I believe this is checkmate <clears throat> B5. Let's think about this. Attacked, 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 attacked. Yeah, it's got to be it. Okay, cool. Yeah, GG. Four blunders. Okay, cool. Let's do the game review on that one. I was really close to losing. Um, he pretty much had mate in one. Um, so I thought just continually keeping him in check was going to be the play there. Looks like I made three blunders, which is understandable. I made some questionable moves with the rook towards the end there. So let's see, I played like a 1050, he played like a 550. Um, okay, cool. 72% accuracy. Not my best, not my worst. And his accuracy was right around 64. So GG, I like Ike. Book move, book move, book move. Book move. Mm, okay. You ignored an opportunity to offer an equal trade of pieces. You permitted the opponent to win a tempo by threatening a queen. Hmm. I don't think he ended up finding that. I kind of have come to learn that if the opponent's bishop comes to, say, b5, capturing outward with a pawn seems to be better, and the engine seems to prefer that as well. And my assumption is that the engine just wants the bishop diagonal to be opened up. f6, really. Hmm. I try not to usually push f6. Seems like it ruins the castle. Hmm. I wonder if there was a better move here. I'm just curious. f6 is best. Huh. Yeah, I just really didn't want to push f6. Um, I didn't want the open diagonal there in case I castled. I know his light square bishop was already off the board, but still, I feel like it's just a bad habit to do that. Defending with the knight seemed okay here. Yeah, so he kind of lost a tempo moving this bishop back and forth. Um, but I guess we were more or less even on tempo since I did a bishop to c5 and then just ended up moving it to b4 as well. Yeah, double pawns seemed like a fine trade there. Take his knight, really. I figured he would have recaptured with the queen, and then that would have just been a waste of time. This pin helps pressure their knight, yeah. Hmm. Out of curiosity. Yeah, I like this position less than the other position that I ended up getting into, so... Interesting suggestions from the engine there. B5 is an inaccuracy. You miss an opportunity to defend a pawn that was under attack. You allow the opponent to kick a bishop. 
I don't believe he found that. Ah. Yeah, I wasn't expecting him to play g4. I thought that would have been just way too aggressive considering I had the escape square there. So, in my humble opinion, b5 was an okay move. But maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, interesting. Taking the pawn that was hanging. Yeah, he removed a defender. So I went for the trade there, but... Then rook a1. So let's see, realistically speaking, he probably would have went... Something like that. No, he wouldn't have done that, because I would... Expose his queen, never mind. He probably would have taken with the pawn, right? Okay, I think I see where this is, where this line's going now. So I, I understand why the engine wants to take with the knight here now. So let me back up. Takes with the knight, recaptures, and then there's a nice juicy fork here. So now I see it, now I see it, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Glad we learned that. Yeah, I failed to register that this pawn was the only thing protecting e4. Taking the pawn and then trading off with a knight. Hmm. Hmm. This was so bad, huh? This leaves your knight undefended and free to take. Oh, sure, because we would have just... Oh, right, because he would have came out ahead on this trade, huh? I see. So even if takes, 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 now I have to deal with his pass pawn. Ah, that makes sense. I did not think that through. Yeah, so just move the knight over to a protected square. Interesting. Okay. Well, I do like the follow-up move that I ended up finding. Yeah, so looks like the engine wanted this pawn to be captured on e5, which is what I uh, mentioned that I found um, like two moves or a move later. I found it like a move too late. So that's cool. That's cool. Right. Because obviously it would have just defended the knight. Makes sense. And then he blundered, and I got a free rook out of that, so yeah, it was really hard to complain. Decent move here. Push the pawn up to a6, the engine says. I offered the trade, he didn't want to go for it, so he took a pawn, and I think I ended up in a better position here. So... <clears throat> engine wanted him to go for some bishop sacrifice here oh right it wouldn't even even been a bishop sacrifice yeah the piece was pinned so he could have just taken that yeah oh which he ended up doing yeah so he did find a good move yeah i, I forgot he put his uh, bishop there g6 is best okay great move that's fine yeah, then I played a really bad move here. Um, wonder what the analysis says. So we're at a fully even position here after I recapture. So I gave him a chance to equalize uh, the analysis. We would just would have been dead even here, which is pretty funny. Man, so I played two really bad moves in a row. Huh. Ah. Ah, right, so I could have gotten out of this bad position. That does make sense. Right. Yeah, I think rook d2 was probably the worst move that I played this entire game. Just failed to notice this bishop diagonal here. Oh, well, what can you do? Yup. So... Yeah, obviously that was a blunder. 
Right. I was thinking, let's just say... Uh, what else could he have done? I, I, was, I was thinking of just launching this rook at his king, and I was hoping he would just go for the queen trade. But I didn't end up doing that. That's fine. Yeah, and he just missed the chance to take the rook there, so... Um, luckily, I was able to find a really good combination of moves to just find checkmate here, though. So... I was being extra cautious here at the end. So... Uh, yeah, I had a handful of blunders, followed those up with good moves, though, which I'm happy about. And I'm glad my strategy of pushing his king off to this empty side of the board paid off. Um, there were some opportunities for other checks, but it would have forced his king sort of downward into my corner or upward into this empty corner as well. But just scooting him over to the right here was definitely the play. I've never had a checkmate like this before, where the rook and the queen sort of work in sort of a, I don't know what you call it, like a staircase fashion or something like that. Kind of a cool checkmate, um, kind of find, fun to find. It, it was a little bit, uh, what's the word for it? Intimidating to try to go for this, obviously because he had the mate in one sitting here. Um, so it was a bit of a threat. But let me just see something. Uh, engine says I have mate in two. Oh, no, 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 no. Looks like I was just reading the wrong thing. Okay, cool. Yeah, so GG. GG, I like Ike. Thanks for the game, man. Thanks for playing. A um, little bit of a, a bummer that I got paired with someone that was uh, quite a bit lower than me, but hey, what can you do? And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.